Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, I'm talking about how I passed uh, AZ900, the Azure Fundamentals, and I've now got a new badge against my name. Before we start, if you are looking for exam dumps or any questions that were actually in the exam to help you, I'm afraid to, you've come to the wrong place. I don't endorse cheating in any way, shape or form. So we'll start off with what the exam covers. Uh, so the first topic is cloud concepts. So the benefits of moving to the cloud, the different uh, cloud offerings such as public or private, differences between platform as a service offerings and infrastructure as a service offerings. Then on to core Azure services. So your compute services, your networking services, your storage services, your database services. Uh, then on to core solutions and management tools on Azure. So when we create or how we create our, our services or resources, how do we then interact with those? And there's a, there's a few different options for there. Most easy is the Azure portal, but then expanding beyond that as well. Then on to secure, general security and network security features. So how do I connect my on-premise network to services in Azure? How do I ensure that that's not subject to attacks uh, through the public internet and sources like that? Then on to identity governance, privacy and compliance. So Azure Active Directory governance, which is massive uh, within the data spectrum at the moment. So what controls do we need in place and how do we ensure those controls are being met? Privacy, so how does Microsoft use the data that we provide? How does it ensure that the data we provide it is secure? And also how does it ensure that the data we have is also secure? Compliance features, so how do we ensure we're meeting our compliance uh, needs or requirements? So if we are a business that operates in a certain sector, we might have requirements uh, for law purposes that we can only store our data in certain locations. How do we put tools or controls in place to ensure we meet that compliance? And also, how do we measure how we are doing compared to meeting that compliance? Then on to cost management. So obviously, when we create services or resources in Azure, uh, it's generally on a pay-as-you-go basis. But how do we ensure we're getting the best value for our money? How do we implement uh cost savings, what can we look at doing, sort of reserving services for set periods of time, or maybe lowering the tier of service that we are using. Uh, how can we predict costs? How can we stay within budget? Things like that. And then service level agreements. So what agreement do we need in place in terms of uptime of our services? It'd be great if everything was up 100% of the time, but we know that's not practical. But Azure services do provide us with a very good SLA in terms of services. How can we look to improve that SLA by introducing concepts such as high availability? And then when we're working with multiple services, how do we get a combined SLA of our entire platform? And then how can we look at reducing single point of failures within the platform? So that's what the exam actually covers. So if you're thinking this is sort of a, a foundational exam, which is, is, is what it actually is, but you will, you will learn a lot about the Azure spectrum. So how much does the exam actually cost? Well, it's actually 99 US dollars. However, I actually took this exam for free and you should be able to as well. So what I did is Microsoft were offering 
some free two-day virtual training days on Azure Fundamentals. I attended one of those and at the end of that I was given a voucher to enable me to take the exam for free and that's exactly what I did. In fact I wasn't actually planning on taking this exam myself um, but because I did the training day got a voucher I thought why not I might as well test my knowledge of the subjects and see how I get on. So what I'll do is I will put a link in the description. Now it's probably going to be as I'm located in the UK, it's probably going to be about UK training days, but if you have a look on the web, you should find some training offerings in your country as well. What sources did I use? So as I mentioned, I attended the virtual two-day training, which was very fast. The instructors were flying through the topics. Uh, and the one thing they kept iterating was that this, this exam covers um, a lot so they kept saying uh, it's a mile long but an inch deep. So you need really a foundational knowledge across a wide array of areas uh, on the Azure platform. So how did I find the exam? Well, I didn't actually know how long the exam was going to take until it actually started. I thought it was an hour and a half, um, but I actually only got 60 minutes, one hour to take the exam. And there were 42 questions, um, but it, they're not difficult questions. They're not where you have to really read um, a lot of information uh, and then eliminate answers. It's sort of straightforward. What is this? And then your four possible choices as normal. And then a few different drop down selects as well as Microsoft typically do. So there's don't be too concerned that you need to answer 42 questions in 60 minutes. It is plenty of time. Why I think you should take the exam. So as I've said, it covers a wide array of topics. Now, I've been working in the Azure portal for, well, in Azure for over three years now, but my knowledge tends to be on the data services. So my weak areas, where well, all areas I'm not as strong as tend to be in sort of networking or security uh, across the, the platform as a whole. Um, and I really picked up some good, some good knowledge and some things I'm going to take away and implement straight away. So I think whatever area you work in, you will typically only work with a number uh, of services in Azure or in any cloud platform. You tend to have your specialist area. Mine is data engineering, so that's the spectrum I tend to stay in. Um, so you will widen your knowledge. You, I know you'll be liaising with other areas within the business. Uh, it gives you knowledge to speak to other people who have different specialisms or just improve your own general knowledge as well. So I definitely think it's worthwhile. Uh, what certification will I be moving on to next? So as I mentioned, I'm a, a data engineer, so I'll be taking my data engineering certifications next. That will be the DP200 and DP201. They are bringing out a 203. I think it's already in beta at the moment, um, but most of the preparation that I've done has been against those those two. So hopefully that should award me the Certified Solutions Associate in Data Engineering. I will keep you posted with that. If you've taken this exam or you're looking to take it in the near future, let me know how you get on. I hope you find this video somewhat helpful. Thanks a lot for watching.